ಶೃಣ್ಣಂತ ವಿಶ್ವೇ ಅಮೃತ ಪುತ್ರ ಆಯೇಧಮಿ ದಿವ್ಯಾತಸ್ತು ವೇದಾಹಮೇತ ಪುರುಷ ಮಹಾಂತ ಆದಿತ್ಯವರ್ಣ ತಮಸ ಪರಸ್ತ ವಿದಿತ್ತೋತಿ ಮೃತ್ಯು ಮೇತಿ ನನ್ನ ಪಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯತೆಯ ಹಿಯರ್ ಓ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಮ್ ಇಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಓ ಸೆಲಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ದೋಸ್ ಯು ಲೀವ್ ಅಬಬ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದ ಫಾಲ್ ಜೆಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹು ಈಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಅಲೋನ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಡೆತ್ there is no other way there is no other way om shanti hi shanti hi shanti hi peace 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 be to all this morning our subject is thoughts on the gita part 56 we are studying dhyana yoga chapter on meditation from the 6th chapter of the gita the spiritual instructor is krishna incarnation of god he is also yogeshwara <clears throat> he is the god of the yogis and he is teaching this meditation to arjuna a great hero of the mahabharata where is he teaching at the battlefield kurukshetr is it a good place to teach meditation in the battlefield generally we give spiritual instruction in the shrine or in the hermitage or in a very spiritual holy place why did krishna fine um, selected the battlefield to give instructions for meditation because it is the most important place to teach vedanta and the upanishad and the meditation why those who come to the battlefield they have no fear of death second they have no attachment for friends and family if you have attachment for friends and family and you have fear for fear of death you cannot come to the battlefield so at that time your mind is ready you know death may come at any time and that is the best time to learn vedanta battlefield when what is the time the war is just about to begin all people blew their conscious that is the signal the war will the war will start just now that time krishna started to give this teachings how long did it take nearly 3 to 4 hours if you reach 700 verses of the gita you need 3 to 4 hours and 
and all who are the, who he is teaching Gita not privately, publicly, in front of 17, 18 million people. They are listening. Arjuna is only an instrument, but he is teaching these beautiful universal instructions of the Gita, meditation, to whole humanity. It is for all. Then we try to imagine about Krishna. He is not seated on an asana. He is standing. His left hand is holding the reins of the four powerful horses. Sheto, Hoir, Hoir, Jukti. Four half, with hand, he grabbed the reins of the four horses. Those horses do not care in Krishna's instructions or Gita. They want food. They want grass. They want to drink. They want to run. That is the nature of the horses. All those ten horses in our, all those horses are in our body, our senses. They are constantly want to run outside, enjoy the sense objects. Krishna is holding. His biceps, triceps are all visible. Strong body. That is his left hand. What is his right hand? Tutra vetrika panai. Whip. Which will help him to driving the horses. If the horses do not listen, he will whip. Move, run, slow down. He has full control over the senses that he is doing. Left hand full of action, right hand also full of action. Face serene, calm, because he is yogi shara, unparted, sometimes smiling. There is no wrinkles of Krishna's face. He does not need plastic surgery, you see. Beautiful, joyful, fully developed face. We must visualize, you know, the, how he, he is teaching the Gita and, the, and this meditation. That is a beautiful word. It is in the meditation of the Gita. Parpanna parijataya totra vetri kapanai jnana mudraya krishnaya gitam rita dviyan duhe namaha totra vetri kapanai. That is a beautiful word. I remember when we were little students, our teacher would come with a cane in hand. Yellows, this size cane, it is on his desk. If you make anything wrong or if you are indisciplined, you will be whipped. So out of fear, <laughs> we memorize grammar. <laughs> I still remember that cane. <laughs> Obey my command, otherwise you will be punished. He is teaching how to meditate. I shall read to you a little bit from Vivekananda. Krishna, the Lord of the souls, talks to Arjuna, or Gurakesha, the Lord of sleep. He who has conquered sleep. The field of virtue, the battlefield is this world. The five brothers representing righteousness, fight the hundred other brothers, all that we love, and have to contend against the unrighteous ones. 
The most heroic brother, would you know, the awakened soul is the general. We have to fight all sense delights. The things to which we are most attached to kill them. We have to stand alone. We are Brahman. All other ideas must be merged in this one. The teachings of Krishna as taught by the Gita are the grandest the world has ever known. He who wrote that wonderful poem was one of those rare souls whose lives sent a wave of regeneration through the world. The human race will never again see such a brain as his who wrote the Gita. Now, Krishna is giving a brief description of the meditation. First, he gave ten instructions on the body. You see, body and mind must be together. If you have physical discomfort, you cannot meditate. If you have mental problem, you cannot meditate. You need Ashishto, Dorishto, Bolishto, Medhavi. Upanishad says you must be well disciplined. You must be very strong physically, mentally. You must be very steady. And you must have a good power of retention, Medhavi. Some people take instructions, forget. What good is can, that kind of accepting teaching? So these are the preconditions to learn meditation. He first says, Rahoshi Sthita, go to a solitary place, not a market place. Second, try to meditate alone. Third, have a pure spot, seat. You cannot meditate in a bar or a tavern or any restaurant. Select a good spiritual spot. Then asana, posture. That I shall discuss these things elaborately. Then how to sit, erect. We shall discuss when we shall take, read those verses. Where shall I concentrate? Concentrate. There are two places you can concentrate. Concentrate between the eyebrows and all on the tip of the nose. That also we shall discuss. Next, don't be restless. Some people, their eyes move here and there. The eye movement is very important. Always remember, our minds go through this body, through the mind. You sit in the shrine, but your mind, you will see your mind has gone through the eyes and seeing your friends and families far away. Then Krishna says, don't eat too much or don't fast, don't sleep too much or don't keep yourself awake. Work also, be moderate. These are the 10 instructions for body. And then five instructions. Yathadipo nivato sthu nengate supama smrita. The unflickering flame of a candle in a windless place. It does not flicker. That should be your mind. It should not flicker. Second, you must have a tremendous willpower to hold the senses so that they may not go out and run around. Third, try to curtail desires. We are all slave to our desires. The more less desires you have, the more happy you are. The more desires you have, the more miserable you are. Because all human beings are running after to fulfill 
their unfulfilled desires. Mind, next Krishna says, mind is the natural tendency of the mind to become rest restless. Learn Pratyahara. Learn how to draw, how to draw the mind. As you pull the horses through the reins, so learn how to draw the mind from the senses. Next, the moment your mind is fixed on God, stop thinking. Hmm? As I tell you, the difference between contemplation and meditation. Contemplation means a bee is buzzing and moving very fast on a, on, on a flower. It did not sit yet. Just vibrate. You have seen how bees try to sit on the flower at that time. Their wings vibrate like the, like the birds, you know, very fast. That is called contemplation. You are contemplating. And meditation means the bee sat on the flower and began to see honey. At the time, you, have, you are motionless. There is no movement in your body. That Krishna says, no kinchito pichintad. At the time, stop thinking. Be absorbed with your chosen deity, God. Then what will happen? That will, that Brahma Sangasparja Sukham Asnuti, Akshayam Sukham Asnuti, you will get tremendous peace and bliss in your life. That is the goal of meditation. So I just gave you a little brief introduction of this chapter. Now I shall go to the text. Chapter 6, verse 10. Yogi Junjita Satatam Atmanam Rahosi Stitaha Ekaki Yatachi Tatma Nirashi Aparigraha. The yogi should constantly practice concentration on the mind, retiring into solitude, alone, with the mind and body subdued and free from all anxiety of hope and position. In this sixth chapter, verse 10 to 32 is an instruction for meditation. And among them, 10 to 26 is how to practice meditation, and 27 to 32 is the result of meditation. What shall we gain from meditation? Some people think that, you know, for me, we sit in the shrine, close our eyes, one hour, two hours. What have we achieved? The computer people, for hours, they get, 60, 70 dollars. The plumbers get 100 dollars. So we try to evaluate our time through money. Electrician, they make also 70, 80 dollars per hour. So I shall sit in the shrine, closing my eyes, what shall I get? How many dollars shall I get? The thing which you will get that dollars cannot buy, you will get peace and joy. Which you cannot buy from the supermarket or in your shopping mall. That you will get, invaluable. Then it fall. Now let us study this verse Yogi Junjita Satatam. The yogi should constantly practice concentration 
tanta imagem. Why constantly I shall practice? Sri Ramakrishna is instructed by his guru. Listen, here is a brass pot. If you do not clean every day, there will be stain. You clean the brass pot every day, it will be dazzling like gold. Similarly, you must practice meditation daily, otherwise will be, there will be stain on your mind. Satatam. But Sri Ramakrishna gave a good answer to his guru, sir. If that pot is made of gold, what will happen? He meant himself. My mind is gold. It is not made of brass. That is very, not human being, you know. All human minds, we have some good, bad. No human mind is absolutely 100% pure. No. But the minds of Ramakrishna, Christ, Buddha, their minds are 100% pure. Not a single bad thought can come in their minds. Their embodiment of purity. Satatam. Every day, practice. I remember when I was in Hollywood, Swami Prabhupada introduced all monks and nuns must practice three hours a day in the shrine. Seven to eight in the morning, 12 to one at noon, and six to seven in the evening. Three times a day you must meditate. In India, some monks meditate four times a day. Do you know why? Sometimes, some sittings you may fail, but once or twice you may, may succeed. Meditation depends on many things. If you are, eat so much, you cannot meditate. If you talk too much, you cannot meditate either. Moreover, you must form a good habit. In our home, if we are not repeating Gayatri Mantra morning and evening, mother will not give food. You go, repeat your mantra first, then come to the dining hall. So this practice of meditation became the part of our life. As eating and sleeping the part of your life, so meditation and repeating mantra became the part of our lives. Actually, it is extremely important. Practice, practice, practice. I remember Shain Prabhavananda went to Shain Brahmananda and asked Maharaj, could you, my mind is restless, could you have any instruction for me? Yes, I have an instruction for you. Struggle, struggle, struggle. That is my instruction for you. Fight. I can remove your bad thoughts from your mind, but your life will be dull. You better win the battle by fighting yourself. If your mother cooks for you and you enjoy that food, you do not appreciate that food. But if you cook yourself, you will appreciate that how much time, energy, skill necessary to prepare a good dish. Patanjali further said, Satatam, always, every day, regularly, Satu dirghukala nairantarji na tatkara sevito dhiro bhumi. If you want to make a steady ground in your meditation, 
Dirgukala Nuirantar Jena. Long time, uninterruptedly. I shall go to some five minutes, ten minutes. I remember when I was instructed a person, I told, try to sit one hour in the morning. And Swami, if I practice 15 minutes, the disciple started to bargain, you see. <laughs> 15 minutes, half an hour. You can see the ball game and in the Dodgers Stadium. Three hours, four hours you sit there, you don't feel any aches and pain. You eat Cokes and popcorn and drink beer, you are fine. The moment I say, come to the shrine and meditate, you complain. <laughs> see the condition of human mind. Nairam Tarjin, uninterruptedly. In Vedanta scriptures, we also read, Akhunda karakarita chitta vritti udeti, on Brahmasti. I am Brahman. This thought, without any interruption, that thought will come in the mind. I am Brahman. I am Brahman. I am Brahman. Not that I am Brahman, I am Chetananda, I am Jin, I am this, I am that. No. Only one thought must come. That he is talking about. Satatam junjita. Next he says, Atmanam Rahusi Sthita. Rahusi, Nijjane Gopane. Environment or meditation. I remember when I first came to Hollywood, I used to see in the Hollywood hills, there's where you see the big sign, Hollywood. On the top of the hill, our ashram was below just on the freeway, 101. So from our ashram, we can see the sign, Hollywood. And on the slope of the hill, you will see beautiful homes, beautiful, peaceful place. Sometimes I used to go walk up the hills, and there is a resort there. I used to move around, come around the reservoir. It was a very good walk. Seeing those cottages, I used to think of these are so peaceful places. But as here, those who meditate here, they get shamadhi. <laughs> <laughs> the American people will get shamadhi here. <laughs> and moreover, most people live by themselves, you know? They, just a single home, live alone. That is something wonderful for me. A group life, you know, and shh, disturbing. The Krishna says, Rahoshi. I remember when Shat Prakashananda is going to M, the recorder of the Gospel of Ramakrishna. M asked, what do you want to do? Only we have started an ashram in Dhaka. We shall, in the property, we shall build a mosque, a church, a Hindu temple, a Buddhist temple, and we shall put a big sign, the temple of universal religions and all those things. He was listening to Shat Prakashananda. <laughs> mm. That is the way he want to preach Ramakrishna. That is the way you want to preach Ramakrishna. Then he told two words, Nirjane Gopane, Nirjane Gopane, Nirjane Gopane. In solitude, secretly, practice spiritual disciplines. That is the way you can preach Ramakrishna. First transform yourself, build your life, build your character. Be and then make. Some teachers only they want to make, they don't, don't want to build their own lives. They only say, follow what I say, don't follow what I do. That does not work. Sri Ramakrishna adds another word, Bakul huye kandu. 
cry with a longing heart to God. People shed jug full of tears for husband, wife, children, money, who weep for God. That Sri Ramakrishna says. Have you ever wept for God? Sri Ramakrishna says another instruction, dhyan korbe mone, bone, kone. Far shall I meditate? Mone. Inside, in your, inside your mind. Bone, in the forest. Forest means in secluded place. Kone, in the corner of the room. Perhaps you people have more advantages than in India. We have joint family. In one room, we have several brothers and sisters. We do not have privacy at all. So, Kone means in the corner of the room. Those who come to me, I sometimes give instruction. Please make a, you have a room for everything. Give a little room to the master or God. Sit up a shrine. That is your resting place. That is your meditation corner. If you can afford to have a full room, give full room, fine. If not, in the corner of your room. Or if you cannot afford that, give a little wall space. Not be on the wall. Ekaki. Ekaki means alone. I generally don't care for group meditation. <laughs> Here some people are, oh, some group, group meditation, group meditation. <laughs> we shall talk about group meditation. <laughs> Control yourself, Bito Trishno, give up desires, Aparigro. Let us read. Having, elab having elaborated all the great achievements of yoga, the qualities that come out of achievements, and the much needed character strength one gets thereby, Sri Krishna now introduces the technique of the specialized yoga practice, different from the yoga teachings of the previous chapters. In verse 10, Sri Krishna advises such people. Yogi Junjito Satatam Atmanam. The yogi has to practice concentration of the mind constantly. How to deal with this mind? How to shape it? How to make it pure? How to make it concentrated? One has to practice it constantly. I still remember in our country home, rainy season is very, 120 inches rainfall, very soggy, very dampy. My mother had a hard struggle to light the matchbox. That matchbox is soggy. So many matchsticks will be spoiled. So what she would do, at night time she would put the matchbox on the kerosene lantern on the top, or in the kitchen we have or then stove from the ground. So when the cooking is over, she will put the matchbox by the out on the side, the, the matchbox will be there. So that this side and the sticks will be dried. So when you scratch this matchstick, it will be ignited instantly. Sri Ramakrishna mentioned that thing, Mon Vijay Deshlai. Soggy mind. So this mind is just like a soggy majesty. Rub, 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 it will ignite. Your stick will go and the layer of that powder will go. But if it is dry, in one strike, you will get the light. That he is talking about. Moreover, in your spiritual life, you must have patience. Latu Maharaj used to say, Samtak pata zarur puregi. Before evening, you will get a leaf plate for your food. If you are lucky, you will get lunch at 12 o'clock. 
then one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, because all are you invited, all will be fed. So have patience. If you have tremendous yearning, longing, you can make tremendous progress quickly. As I told you that abhyas, practice. See here, every morning except Sunday, I repeat 10 verses of the Gita. I myself and other monk also, the monks, they all repeat 10 verses of the Gita just to practice so that I can remember. I read Gita many, many times to bring that thing fresh in the memory. That is called practice. Rahoshi Sthita, Puribesh, environment. Settled in a secluded place in this specialized yoga, the mind can be handled nicely only in a quiet, secluded place, not in a place where it is constantly disturbed by external forces. Not only so, ekaki, alone, not in a crowd. Once you try to go beyond the sensory level, there is no need to people at all. Even if somebody is sitting next to you, you are not in touch with the person. You are in a different world entirely. The other person is also a different world. So you become ekaki automatically when you sit in meditation. You might be in a crowd, but you are alone. And for that reason, you will see some monks when they sit for meditation, they carry a chadar and the cow they put on their head and that way they cut off connection from other people. In a group seated there, but that veil and the chadar that covers everything and that way he cuts off the external things. I told you my story that I, when I joined in one room, five people. Next, another room, two people. Next, another room, next time, another room, four people. Next, another room, three people. So I was praying God can give me a single room so that I can meditate whole night. That I got a chance after eight years in the monastery. <laughs> And when I got that, my single room, what happened? It is a small room, there is very little room, floor space. So I sat for meditation on the bed. The moment you sit for meditation on the bed, bed became to, we began to cry. Hi, you are very tired, lie down on me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you read proof so long. You are very tired, your eyes are tired, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I obeyed. <laughs> I obeyed my bed and I lay down. <laughs> then I thought I'm cheating myself. No way. I, I left my room, went to the sixth, fifth floor on the roof and sat on, under the open roof. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, mind is Ikaki. In, in one scripture, Jivan Mukti Vivek, they mention, if two persons are together, that is called Mithun. When it's just a group. If three persons together, it becomes village. If four persons together in one place, it becomes a city. <laughs> Plotinov says, it is a journey from alone to alone. When you meditate, you will go. Your husband, your children, nobody will go. Spiritual life in this respect it is a journey from alone to alone. Group meditation, of course, is, is important for the beginners. <laughs> One day, Swami Brahmananda invited the monks. 
All of you should meditate with me in the morning, four o'clock, in my room. So most of them came, a couple of few did not go. Then one day Maharaj caught him. I don't see you in my room, why do you go? Maharaj, I, 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 I go, I go, <laughs> I go to, in the shrine, in Sri Ramakrishna's room. Hmm. Why do you go? Maharaj, I meditate in Swamiji's room. <laughs> oh, you captured all best places, as if I am nobody, huh? <laughs> you go there, sit 10, 15 minutes, and then you go and lie down in your bed. From tomorrow, come to my room. I am somebody. <laughs> You'll have to meditate with me. Just see, the beginners, newcomers, they need group meditation. Otherwise, they would cheat, as I was cheating, lying down on bed, you see. <laughs> aloneness. How to enjoy that aloneness? We shall realize that we are not truly alone. Through yoga, we shall come in touch with the profound divine being, hidden in our own heart. But this takes a long time and steady practice, and that technique is being expounded here. Hmm. The Swami quoted a, a Swami Ranganathanandaji's Gita. He quoted from a song, Jato Neridaya Rekho Adorini Shamamake Hold the adorable mother Shama to your heart. Oh my mind, by means of your careful service, see her, your, her yourself and let me see her and take care that nobody else sees her benefits besides. I sometimes, when my mind bothers me too much, I sing another song. Apnate apni theko moon jeo na ko karu ghare jaacha bita boche pabi khujo ni jon to pure paramodhan se raton mani jaman chata bita dite pare se chint katamani pore as se chintamani naz duare. It is a song of Kamala Kanto. It is a beautiful song. Apnate apni theko moon jeo na ko. Oh my mind, just stay within yourself. Don't go to others' minds. Do you know what do you do? Your mind goes to other minds, what, they are, what other people are doing. You meditate on many other persons when you sit in the shrine. The person you love, you carry that person in your heart. If you love God, you will carry, you will carry God in your heart. If you have some lovers, you will think of that person. Or if you love something, one of our devotees used to say, my Swami, my husband loves his boat more than he loves me. <laughs> that he has a boat in, in the ocean, in the Pacific. But he, day and night, Swami meditates on his boat. <laughs> I am his wife, but he does not care. Sometimes, as I was talking about your group meditation, do you know why? Those who are newcomers, brahmacharis, they always, the authority will put them two, three, two, minimum two, three persons in one room. Do you know why? Because they will think about their home, family, old samaskaras. But if they are in a group, they will, they will watch each other, they will not be able to get chance to think about their past. Within 12 years, if you cannot put deep impressions of your monastic life, you will not be able to make it properly. Impressions must be replaced by the new impressions. Your bad impressions, family impressions must be wiped out. And the spiritual impressions should be in your mind. Otherwise, you will never make progress in your spiritual life. 
People day and night think about friends and family. That's it. You may stay in the monastery, but your mind will dwell outside. So Krishna says, in this way, should always try to discipline and control his or her mind and the inner forces. He should be yato chittatpa, one who has disciplined one's body and mind. Jata means discipline. And jyoti is one who has disciplined the mind. It also refers to sinasin. Jato chittatpa means that the chitta, chitta means mind, as well as the atma, should be controlled. Here, atma means the body. He should also be nirashi, jisa, desireless. In him or her, there should be no desire for the mind to go out. Control. There is, a, there is an analogy of a chariot in the Kato Upanishad, Ratha Kalpana. The Upanishad says, here is a chariot, that is the body. And these horses are the senses. The mind is the rain. The charioteer, the driver, is buddhi, intellect. The passenger is the Atma. He is seated there and Buddha is driving this chariot. The road is made of sense objects. See, these horses, the senses, are running over the sense objects. If your horses are disciplined and your charioteer is good, and the reins of the horse is good, you will reach your destination, definitely, positively. That the Upanishad says. Otherwise, na virato dushyaritat na shanta na samayito na shanta manasa api prajyane nai na maapnuyat. Na virato dushyaritat. If your character is not good, you will not be able to make it. Nashantu, if your senses are not controlled, calm. If your mind is not disciplined, if your mind is not absorbed in the Atman, only through intellectual knowledge you will never, never be able to reach the goal, the Atman, the Self. That Upanishad that we learn from the Kata Upanishad. Next is Aparigraha. Aparigraha is taking no gift from others. So many gifts are order offered to you, and when you go on accepting all these gifts, then your mind is gone out. No, uh, yes, gone out. Aparigraha is a great virtue in yoga, which is so mentioned to one of the yoga sutras of Patanjali. When a person lives a worldly life, he or she needs help from people. But in this path of self-realization, none of those things will be helpful to us at all. So this wonderful virtue, this aparigraha, comes automatically to the spiritual aspirant when he or she realizes that after all, others can give me more only money or furniture, this and that, but I don't find any use for them. I am not in search of them. I am in search of something higher. Aparigraha. Aparigraha means what is necessity, what is necessary for your living to maintain your body and living, accept that thing. Don't take anything extra. <laughs> I shall tell a funny story. When I first came to oh, in India, I didn't have any woolen clothes at all. In winter time, thick, some 
T-shirt, double knit T-shirt. So when I came, Shami Prabhupada gave me a sweater. Then I saw Shami Pavitrananda Ji also gave me a sweater. So I had two. I told my goodness, I have two sweaters. Then when I went to Santa Barbara, it was a Christmas time, it's Christmas 1971, the nuns gave me a sweater. <laughs> then I returned that thing to them. And the nuns were very upset. And my, at the, my attendant was Ralph Swami. The nuns are very upset you returned their gift. I tell him, Ralph, I have already two sweaters. What shall I do with the third one? Then is, Ralph was my guru, <laughs> American guru. <laughs> he was a brahmachari. <laughs> he was telling Swami, you don't understand. I tell him, why? What do you mean? You will have to leave three places. Hollywood, Tribuco, near San Diego side, and the think Santa Barbara. You will have to come out three places. You need three sets of clothing, three sweaters. You need three sets of toothpaste, three sets of brush, and clothing so that you will not have to pack every time from one to one. I have to commute nearly 150 miles every week. So, so I went to the head nun and said, I'm sorry that I was suffering from renunciation. <laughs> Please give me that sweater. <laughs> I shall never forget that one. I had to go and apologize to the nuns. <laughs> I, I was suffering from renunciation for the reason I rejected your sweater. Please give me back. <laughs> Because Ralph convinced me, Swami, this is the way you will have to live. I'm going, all right, Ralph, whatever you say. <laughs> that is, in America, Aparigraha does not work. Non-receiving gift. Look, I tell you my problem. <laughs> in America. <laughs> Here, one of our devotees, you know, he has so many pairs of clothes still you will buy. One man, four cars. Three, four cars. Do you know what is your problem? Problem is your mind will be scattered with your three homes, four cars, 18 credit cards, you will have to pay in the bank. You will, you will never get time to concentrate on God. Just see, if you have too many possessions, what happens? Operate Bishaye, <laughs> this scripture says, <laughs> it's for the reason if when some people want to give me gifts, I, am, I get scared. <laughs> First, I had a desire for camera, that desire is gone. I had a desire for fountain pen, that desire is gone. I have desire for watch, that desire is gone. So what desire I can create? I have computer, that's all. That is for working purpose. Do you know what? If you have too many gadgets, your mind will go to those gadgets to take care of them. I do not want to spend my mind to many things, then my mind from, will, will go away from God. See, that is called operative grow. Watch yourself. Thing which is absolutely necessary, have it. But don't try to possess too many things. I have one attachment only at present, books. <laughs> many books I have. <laughs> that is enough. Aparigri, Vishaya Arjun. The scripture says, Arjun, when we accumulate, when we earn something, then that is all right. Next problem, Rakshan, how to preserve it. You earn money, now you have to hold it, preserve it. Then, when that money is spent away, Khoi, you get pain. Earning money is a great effort. A lot of labor. Saving money, 
if your money is in a stock market mind is up and down stock goes up and down mind is up and down problem third if you spend your <laughs> tommy loshot they used to say i earn money my wife is in the shopping mall what can i do <laughs> So your wife spends money, you will get paid. Children misuses money, misuse money, you get paid. Shongo, association, hinsha, jealousy, all the, if you have a lot of possessions, these things will come to your life, you cannot avoid it. That Krishna, that the commentator says. Yogi Junjita Satatam Atmanam Raja Ekaki Yata Chitra Atma Nirashi. Nirashi means don't create too many desires. My, one of my professors used to say, we are studying economics in the college. Subject, human wants. This whole economy moves because of the human wants. If you have no desire, you will not go to the shopping mall. If, they, if you do not go to the shopping mall, the, the, those mer things, merchandise will not be sold. Industry will not move. The economy will not work. All are interconnected with human wants. What is this rule of economics? Demand and supply. That is the way whole this economy, this world moves. Demand and supply. So if you have no demand, no supply, many shops will be closed, many people will lose job. Just see how these things are interconnected. Nirashi. When the Swami, all people practice Nirashi, this, this whole world will collapse, it is true. So nobody, will, <laughs> for the reason, go. Our television people, our newspaper people are continually bombarding commercials on your mind so that you can go and, <laughs> and buy in the market. You know, we have everything. <laughs> Nirash. Asha. If there is no hope, it is hope is helping us to be alive in this world. Hoping after hope. We are creating hope, desire, desire, desire. That is the way our world moves. If you have no desire, you will lie down on bed, you will not get up. It is the desire which forces you to get up from bed, to go to work, to make money, to spend money. That is the way it goes. Everything comes from that desire. And Krishna is asking Nirashi, <laughs> who is going to listen to Krishna? <laughs> Anyhow, have some, that is the reason, have some legitimate desires, which is necessary, which is not an obstacle to your spiritual growth. That is the reason Krishna said Nirashi. And if you are completely desireless, you will be part of Mahamsha. Illumined. Very few. Among millions and millions, you will find one, maybe. My goodness, I only covered only one verse. <laughs> I prepared six verses. All right. Thank you. Matma me shuddantam jyoti raham viraja bi papma bhuyasam. Antaratma me shuddantam jyotiraham virajabhi papma bhuyasam 
परमात्मा मेई शुद्धंतम ज्योतिरहम विरजा भी पापमा भूयासम ओम शांति ही शांति शांति ही मी माई बॉडी बी कम प्योर मे आई बी फ्री फ्रॉम इम प्यूरिटीज एंड इग्नोरेंस मे आई रियलाइज माई सेल्फ एज द लाइफ इन डिवाइन मे माई माइंड बी कम प्योर मे आई बी फ्री फ्रॉम इम प्यूरिटीज एंड इग्नोरेंस मे आई रियलाइज माई सेल्फ एज द लाइफ इन डिवाइन मे माई सोल बी कम प्योर May I be free from impurities and ignorance. May I realize myself as the light and divine. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.